Uh, within the attention network, uh, we actually expand the number of hospitals in a registry. And uh, this is starting 2017, we start prospectively collecting data from basal artery occlusion patients within the first 24 hours that were treated according to local standards of care um, uh, with either endovascular treatment or best medical management, okay? And over the course of uh, a few years, we uh, collect a total of actually over 2,100 patients, mostly of which like just over 1,600 patients were treated with endovascular therapy and about 460 were treated with best medical management. So with that, you could do an adjusted analysis comparing both therapies. And what you found was that patients who were treated with endovascular treatment had more favorable outcomes defined as a modified rank scale of zero to three at 90 days, meaning you can walk on your own, even if you aren't fully independent, you are able to walk on your own. But also there was a higher, a higher rate of uh, functional independence at 90 days. There was an overall reduction in the degree of disability and even lower mortality, despite an increase in the rates of symptomatic intracranial hemorrhage. So that was our registry, right? Which is great data, a lot of patients. So that's the strength of it. But whenever you do registries and you compare groups, uh, you can have bias. So it's really important we do what we end up also doing, kind of in parallel with the registry. Uh, in January last year, we start randomizing patients. Two to one, two patients would get randomized to thrombectomy for every patient getting randomized to best medical management. We conclude the recruitment of the patients, 340 patients were recruited uh, in February, and then you follow them up for 90 days. And the results we present is from this cohort of 340 patients that were randomized in this trial. What the trial essentially demonstrates is that the primary endpoint of more favorable outcomes, again, modified one scale zero to three, was higher with endovascular treatment. Uh, we had 46% of the patients achieving that primary endpoint with endovascular treatment versus only 22.8% of the patients in the best medical management arm. So that gives us an, uh, adjusted, uh, uh, an adjusted risk ratio of 2.1, which was highly significant with a p-value less than 0.001, and a number you need to treat of just four. For every four patients you treat, one patient you benefit, which is an extremely low number. Moreover, there was a lower degree of overall disability. When you look at the modified monk scale, and do, we do what's called the ordinal shift analysis, which means for every patient that it's treated, you are actually degree, decreasing at least one point in terms of the disability scale. The common odds ratio was 2.8, which is actually just as good, numerically better than what you see in the anterior circulation, which is 2.5. So uh, that was another great finding. And Finally, you were also able to demonstrate a significant difference in terms of more people being fully independent at 90 days with uh, an adjusted risk ratio of 3.2, as well as lower mortality at 90 days with an adjusted risk, risk ratio of 0.7. Uh, that all happened despite a, a slightly higher but significant increase in symptomatic intracranial hemorrhage with endovascular therapy, which was 5.3% versus 0% in the best medical management group.